good afternoon everyone i welcome you all to icf travel series break free session number 24 and today as part of our series we are having a multi speaker session today we will have malvika jain who is the founder of cyclop community on facebook which she founded in 2012 it's the big, largest cycling group on facebook and as part of the community the members shared their stories and they came out with a book which is called take off neera jain who is an icf member she sent me a sample chapter last year and i was hooked like i was waiting for the book to come out ever since i read that chapter the sp three speakers for today are dr mahendra meera and charan so they will introduce themselves as their turn comes in the presentation but we will start today's show with malvika she can tell us a little about her community and about the book and then we will move on to the editor of the book so over to you malvika thank you thank you for having me here today uh, dr kumar and a big hello to everyone um, hirag jyotirmoy sonali pramita kora mohan harshad sudhanshu shreshta sujata murli so many more people a uh, great pleasure as i believe everyone is from the writing community it is hard work harder than i realized to make a book and finally to put it in front of everyone uh, is a pleasure um the cyclist today and the editor are going to talk more about that i would like to tell you uh, a little bit about cyclop where what it is and how you know the whole book came about so my name is malvika and uh, i was cycling a lot in 2000 and i started cycling uh, long distance and off road in 2009 um 2012 so I think during corona this has picked up a lot and you must have seen cyclists in the city in your city especially on morning rides so we were doing this um in around 2009 and there were not so many cyclists so i made a group then on facebook called cyclop um and today it is india's largest group and it's a very small thing but it helps cyclists then to be in touch with each other buy and sell cycles among each other which were expensive so it was good to you know uh, have access to the cycles plan rides and do all of that so uh that is basically what cyclop is if you have been thinking that you want to start cycling for a long time or want to find people near you that you can cycle with Uh, or you're just wondering what's going on in this group what are these uh, sports people or ordinary people talking about then i welcome you to uh, join this group it's on facebook you just have to look for cyclop that is c y c l o p t m and it would be great if you can also drop in the chat here which city you're from and what do you do so i'll have a great idea of the audience today um so that cyclop and that is me and any questions that you have please drop them in the chat would love to get back to them and tell you more so thank you over to uh, neera jain who is going to uh, show you the book and tell you about the making of the book you are on mute neera yes Hello everyone I'm Neera Jain the editor of uh, this book and I'd like to tell you how it all came about so as Malvika just told you Cyclop is a largest uh, online community and uh, Malvika drew my attention to the stories that were being posted on that group 
and I found them fascinating. There were all these people who were doing things that we all could just never imagine. They were cycling in the mountains and there were housewives and there were young girls and there were old people and uh, fit and young, strapping young men. All kinds of people were there and they all had stories to tell. And Malvika said to me, you know something, I feel these stories should reach everyone. People don't know what exciting things are happening. And I thought that that was a really good idea. So what we did was that we did an internet search and uh, trying to see whether there are similar books already available. And to my surprise, they really weren't. There were these individual books written by individual writers about solo rides, but I couldn't find any collection of stories written by several uh, cyclists. So I thought that this, uh, Malvika said, this is a job worth doing. Let's go for it. And so we jumped into it. And she posted um, uh, posts on her group asking for stories. And the stories started coming in. In my inbox, every morning I would uh, open my inbox and find three or four stories. And every uh, post would uh, usually be uh, associated with two liners saying, you know, these are not really stories. I don't think I'm a writer. But anyway, this is my experience and I hope you can make something out of it. And as I went through all those experiences, I could see that they were really experiences and not stories in the conventional uh, sense of the term, but all of them had the makings of stories because all the experiences involved some kind of a conflict and then reaching a resolution. And that is what a story always has. So I thought with a bit of pruning, we could have a good collection of stories. And so we set about it. And it took us two whole years to uh, go through the whole project. And we collected uh, at the end 37 stories. And I'm really proud of each one of them. And the reason why we didn't go in for uh, traditional publishing is A, it, uh, they were taking too much time during Corona. And B, they said, you know, some stories are worth it and some aren't. But I didn't agree with that. We didn't agree with that. For us, every story was valuable because it expressed the personality of the person who had gone through the whole experience. And we found that quite interesting. So we have a variety of stories in this book. And um, in fact, if you look at the table of contents, you'll be surprised to see what a huge variety we have. We have people from Kashmir to Kanyakumari to Assam and all sorts of places. And uh, there is a housewife who is, uh, whose husband is posted in Bhuj and she is scared to step out alone on the highways of, um, of Bhuj, but she decides that she's going to do it. So she packs a tiffin and she sets off. That is one story. There's another story about, um, about uh, Dr. Mahajan who decides to take on the death race, the most difficult race in the world. And that's a really professional kind of cycling, uh, the kind of uh, story that people make films about. And then there are those other kind of stories in which, um, uh, which uh, people say, you know, I used to like cycling when I was a kid, but I, I really forgot how to cycle. I forgot everything till the day that I realized it was uh, quite, uh, it was too much of a pain to commute to uh, work uh, by auto or by car or by taxi. And I just got on my cycle. And so uh, Charan, you did something like that, and that's going to be your story, I guess. So uh, all kinds of stories, and uh, cutting the long story short, because I can go on about this for a very long time. So uh, we preserve the variety of stories, and the other thing that I very deliberately preserved was the individual tone of every writer. Every writer had a very distinct tone and that I thought was the USP of the book. So there's a girl from Bihar who says, uh, who says, I'm Pinky Jha, I'm 38 years old, I'm tough, I'm strong, I wear lipstick and I wear eyeliner. 
and I'm a super randonneur. So, wow, super randonneur. By now I had understood that that means that you have done four or five long distance uh, um, cycling events in one calendar year. Very impressive. So uh, these kind of uh, different tones. And then there was this uh, young boy who went from Kerala into the upper reaches of Himalaya. And he had an almost mystical experience there. He said, when I uh, crossed the bridge over a river and I saw small three idols placed uh, near the bridge, covered with sindoor, then I felt almost connected with the thousands of people who must have traveled that path earlier. So uh, you see, and then there are those uh, hardcore cyclists like Naveen John, who uh, about to reach the finishing line was pumping with adrenaline and Gautam Chima, the very professional cyclist. So, you know, everything is there in this book. And I think every story is neither too big nor too small. It just makes a beautiful package, which we all hope will ignite a spark that will become a wildfire in India among our youth, which is basically a great love for the outdoors and the enrichment that it brings to lives. I'll stop here, I think, and be ready for questions later on. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I, at this point, I would like uh, Karthik to start with the slides and uh, switch over to Dr. Mahajan to get the ball rolling on the cycling itself. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I am audible. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, Great. sir. Uh, right. So, uh, as uh, I mean, a little introduction uh, about myself, I would say I am basically, uh, I was born and brought up in a small town in Maharashtra and uh, Actually, I was not uh, into any of the sports earlier, like uh, I have not represented myself at a district level or, you know, at state level or anything like that. It was just that uh, during our time, during our, uh, I mean, I am 45 years old, so I think uh, people can connect that uh, there was a lot of uh, outdoor, you know, we used to play a lot of outdoor games. So that was one thing. And uh, later on, uh, as I, as I, uh, as I did my 10th and 12th standard, I started studying, you know, before that there was all, uh, you know, all play and no study, that sort of thing. And uh, later on, I went on to become a graduate in uh, dental sciences, that is uh, dentistry. And uh, basically, after after my graduation, uh, I, I uh, did my post-graduation. And till that time, I was not much involved into any of the physical activities or uh, so. But after coming back to, you know, after uh, coming back to Nasik, my hometown, my brother was already into trekking. He was, uh, uh, he had done his uh, basic and advanced monitoring course. So he just, uh, I mean, we stay in a joint family. So it just happened that I started doing the Himalayan treks with him. And uh, from year 2003 to almost like uh, 10 years, uh, the routine was like, uh, go for one of the Himalaya treks, a high altitude one around, uh, you know, uh, 15 to 20,000 uh, uh, feet of elevation. And that's all. And later on, like, uh, we started participating in Mumbai Marathon. And then uh, around 2010, 11, I remember, uh, we started doing cycling as one of the activity for physical fitness. But uh, what started as a casual cycling, you know, it went on becoming um, my passion. Uh, it is said that nothing great in this world can be achieved without passion. So that is a statement, you know, uh, that is there on the Race Across America uh, book. Uh, so that really caught my attention. And uh, 
uh it was it just started the long distance cycling was like first uh, uh, was uh, hitendra has organized one 150 km rally from uh, thana to nasik that was on the world environment day and we started training for that and uh, gradually we did 30 50 and 100 km or so and that day we could manage to uh, complete the 150 km distance in a day time so that was like wow a great great achievement that time and later on uh, we came to know about this uh, we were we were riding a mountain bike that time mtb so hitendra heard that uh, there is something called as race uh, this uh, tour of the dragon which is uh, a race conducted by bhutan olympic committee in the uh, you know bhutan is a himalayan kingdom and there is this mtb race uh, which is called as the world's toughest single day mountain bicycle race so that is what caught our attention and it's it's around 270 kilometers uh, race wherein you have to cross four mountain passes and you have to complete that in uh, you know uh, a span of 16 hours that is the cut off time the elevation is so much here that you climb 4000 meters and you get down 4000 meters so the total altitude is like 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 uh, almost climbing mount everest so and uh, one more point was this was started by the prince of bhutan and he himself was a avid cyclist and he had completed this so we thought when a prince uh, who has all all you know all luxuries uh, with him he can do that much of cycling why can't we so it is just that we started uh, as i said i was i am a dentist by profession my brother is an anesthesiologist so what we used to do is uh, we had sunday at our discretion so uh, we used to set out on the road on the highway towards bombay uh, deciding that we'll will pedal for you know uh, 12 hours 6 uh, probably 5 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock till it is a daylight right so we started increasing that distance and that is how we trained but the difference was when we when we went to bhutan it was like a very hilly terrain so it was uh, i mean here we have a, a climbs of say 7 to 8 kilometers but in bhutan there were climbs of around 40 kilometers for 2000 meters and all so i remember distinctly remember when the prince uh, when we had an introduction with the uh, prince and uh, he he thought that these doctors are i mean they have come from the plains and they intend to finish this race so this is the start line of uh, uh, of bhutan and uh, you can uh, see uh, i mean we have worn this uh, you know uh, knee guards and uh, we were quite amateur at that time I, amateur in the sense we just knew that we have to pedal the distance there was no scientific training involved or anything like that and uh, you can see this this race is starts at 2 o'clock in the night you know uh, you are flagged off at 2 o'clock and uh, we started pedaling you know uh, so i remember we were in the somewhere in the middle i mean so few riders were behind us few were front in front of us and after finishing this around 200 kilometers uh, the prince came the prince uh, was in the vehicle and he said dog you are still riding i mean that time many people have uh, you know left the race because of the amount of climbs it rained and as it rains and when you climb a uh, you know uh, towards the pass it becomes very chilly so this was our experience of tour of the dragon uh, my elder brother hitendra we we both uh, you know i finished in time and i became the first indian to finish uh, this tour of the dragon uh, uh, i mean i could i could finish it within the uh, stipulated time but somehow hitendra uh, was a little bit lagging so he could not he finished the race but he was uh, he didn't do it in the within the time frame and this story which is got published in uh, this take off uh, is about this tour of the dragon race so uh, in brief i could i could summarize what uh, i mean in a in a brief uh, but 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 a detailed description is there in the uh, this story i think everybody should read that and uh, it it is really thrilling uh, and later on uh, hitendra as we progressed in our cycling uh, journey then again he went in 2017 and he completed the race so that is the best part the unfinished business was done so i remember this is a this uh, this time was uh, when we were not scientifically training so in 2013 as we progressed i came to know about braves like many people know about braves these are unsupported cyclothons which range from 200 to 600 kilometers and uh, these are very good rides i would say for endurance cycling because 
as you test yourself as you ride 200 kilometers you know what problems you face and you start searching what solutions i can i mean how i can overcome that suppose it could be a it could be a back ache it could be your uh, anything like uh, you feel very exhausted after doing riding 60 kilometers 70 kilometers so then you try to read about nutrition and everything so this such unsupported rides i mean whoever who wants to do long distance cycling or touring for uh, that matter uh, should ride these breves uh, as they are time bound so you need to have a decent amount of speed not very much i mean there are many people who are doing it uh, right right up to the age of 77 77 i know 77 year old uh, dr bhat dr uh, arya is there in nagpur he has completed 200 and 300 kilometers breve so i mean breves are for anybody and everybody there is no barrier of any cycle you could have a geared ungeared basic cycle anything like that but this really teaches you when you graduate from 200 kilometers you know you always feel that i could complete this what about how would be doing 300 so you gradually train for that and do 300 now when you do 4 300 and 400 there is night sections involved in it so up to 600 kilometers i think is doable by i would say most of the people who are who are fit can do it because uh, there is plenty of time and you just need to plan yourself and as i said the most important aspect is when you ride brave is uh you come to know what problems you face and how do you overcome that so it happened with us that we completed this uh, super randonneur series and then what next you know we could complete this 600 kilometers so i came to know that there is a race called as deccan cliffhanger and it is a ram qualifier race so ram what is ram like we started reading and uh, yeah so we came to know that race across america is a race which starts from west coast uh from uh, from the uh east coast to west coast and it's roughly around 5000 kilometers and it has to be completed by uh, a solo rider in 12 days and as a team of two you get 9 days to complete it so uh, if you divide the distance it is almost like riding 600 kilometer per day by team of two people you know if uh, we ride in a team of two format so we thought it is not our cup of tea but then i we realized that uh, this deccan cliffhanger or romp there were only four cyclists in india who had qualified for ram so me and my brother uh, thought that if we at least forget about ram like if we just qualified we would at least be counted as uh, we, we will be around fifth or sixth cyclist from india who had qualified for ram for that purpose we went to uh, the race that was 643 kilometers to be done in 32 hours i finished second hitendra finished third so we finished in pretty uh, decent time you know so uh, of course then uh, this ram was our uh, goal and then to do ram uh, we were uh, we knew that uh, just you know casual cycling won't take us to the finish line so we started scientifically training uh, our coach is uh, was mr uh, mr mithen thakkar from mumbai you know it was a nine months of very scientific and rigorous training and uh, that involved interval training and uh, lots of climbs and gradually you know we could ride i could ride 100 kilometers in 3 hours and 200 kilometers in 6 6 and a half hours so we became that better i mean we used all power meters gadgets everything and that is how we reached the uh, we went to uh, ram and uh, uh, of course the it is a it is a brutal race it is brutal race because just the volume of it is you know 5000 kilometers taking you through the desert of arizona where the temperature is around 46 degrees celsius and it takes you to the rocky mountains where there are slow and snow clad mountains and then last three days we did not see sunshine so it was like me and my brother pedaling round the clock 24 hours in a relay format now what does that relay means is at any given time one of us was on the road so you know we used to take turns for one or two hours and ride the distance and in the night we used to ride for four to five hours so that one when i am riding for four to five hours hitendra will get rest and when uh, i finished my uh, my my uh, turn hitendra starts riding and then i get to get those four five hours now that's so small time because once you finish your ride you get into the vehicle you eat something try to sleep and then get up and get ready in so you barely get 2 3 hours of sleep 
you know on that 2 to 3 hours you sustain for another day so it's it's really a, a wonderful it it was a wonderful journey and i would say that if somebody wants to go through the grill of you know uh, challenging ultra cycling then this is the race um, for a solo you require a very uh, very professional and dedicated to two at least two years of training and uh, for a team of two yes it is quite challenging because you know we have to ride 600 kilometers per day between both of us so that's the challenge so we finish this race in 8 days 14 hours that was 10 hours before the cut off time and we became the first indians to finish race across america and not only finish but thank you but but uh, we were we stood first in our age category that was between 18 to 14 years of 49 years of age and when we uh, we took it as any other challenge like a trek and we completed it but when this news was you know it went so viral throughout country and then even uh, our, our honorable uh, prime minister modi ji he mentioned about it in man ki baat and he even felicitated us actually uh, ram can be used as a platform to do a social work also because uh, you know you can appeal people to generate for a cause and uh, our team the name of our team was team india vision for tribals that was because uh, here is an ophthalmologist team in nasik there is a kalpatru foundation and they carried out around 400 cataract surgeries free of cost for tribals and through the donations that they received for us our participation so it was uh, that work for the tribals which uh, you know which was appreciated well by modi ji and throughout the country and uh, that is how we we uh, we were uh, people started knowing about us that these guys are some crazy doctors from nasik and they are uh, doing such uh, ultra cycling and uh, something called as race across america many people tell us that we had heard only two tour of the i mean to tour de france as a cycling event and they came to know something like uh, about ram through us so that's that's a wonderful feeling when i when we get to hear some compliments like that and later on uh, like it just happened that dr mahajan brothers and race across america was becoming an equation so we thought let's do something something bigger than that in india so we chose the golden quadrilateral of india the this was in 2016 december it, the nights were really cold and uh, we started from gateway of india uh, we started from gateway of india mumbai and uh, we rode to bangalore chennai from chennai to kolkata kolkata to delhi and delhi to bombay so all these four metro cities of india are connected by a an highway and that highway is called golden quadrilateral of india and we both brothers decided that the way we rode in uh, race across america which was a non stop team of two relay let's ride it in india and uh, that is how uh, we rode the 6000 kilometers in 10 days 19 hours so the average kilometers that we clocked was around 570 or so and this time the slogan was you know we uh, the slogan was follow the rules and india will rule so uh, we just appeal everybody through you know distributing pamphlets on social media that everybody if we follow all the rules laid down by the constitution of india yes uh, india can become a superpower so that was an idea that uh, to appeal everyone to follow the rules and that was also appreciated very well throughout uh, throughout the cycling fraternity by the uh, honorable prime minister also and um, later on you know um, 2018 or so i decided that uh, since uh, uh, let's let's target some guinness record so as i was into ultra cycling so uh, i applied for guinness record from kashmir to kanyakumari and the guinness rec- guinness people you know they gave 12 days to complete and uh, uh, this was in uh, again again in november 2018 so this uh, we the ride started from srinagar actually um, we had not anticipated that it will uh, there is you can see a snowfall here near a jawar tunnel so we had not anticipated that we will we'll, uh, be facing the snowfall but uh, unfortunately there was lot of snowfall it was very very chilly when we started and um, i remember there were a lot of wind there was landslides my knee started hurting and there was one more uh, you know a major 
a sort of an accident that happened uh, i won't reveal details of it because uh, uh, one of my uh, i have made a film out of it uh, that is called k2k and i would urge everybody who is listening to me that uh, i will share the details that and it's it's also i had posted about, about it in on facebook so uh, you will definitely like this movie because it had really all the challenges uh, you know but uh, due to the support of my crew members like now uh, they play a very significant role and everyone had a very uh, had set a very high standard and then we we managed to complete this in 10 days 9 hours and my dream, my childhood dream of having my name in guinness world record i couldn't do it through my profession which was a dentistry but my, through my passion of cycling i could uh, achieve this and uh, later on in 2019 uh, similarly like 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 cycling we also uh, had uh, you know uh, we wanted to do something in mountaineering so mount everest was the uh, we decided to climb mount everest and as you know that uh, climbers from all over the world they gather at kathmandu uh, they fly from their country to kathmandu but we as a cyclist we thought let's start the expedition from sea level that is mumbai we both pedaled we both brothers pedaled from mumbai to kathmandu on a bicycle and uh, that is how we reached nepal then followed by everest base camp trek and followed by to the summit of mount everest so this expedition was started from a sea level and it finished at the sky level so we called this uh, this expedition as sea to sky and uh, we prom- we propagated cpr which is a you know cardio pulmonary resuscitation we did 15 sessions in different uh, cities en route and this is how my journey about cycling uh, which began as a you know i began as a leisure cycling and then it was tour of the dragon to race across america to a guinness world record and finally to the summit of mount everest so uh, what i would like to convey is like um, i am doing this i am balancing my profession so i have to reach my clinic at 10 o'clock but whatever time i can get up at 6 o'clock do my training for one or two three hours whatever it is and you can get back to work and that is how you can balance your profession and passion and as i said i was not into you know any professional uh, i had i was not into any state level or national level of sports but still i could do this so my message would be that anybody can start at any age and uh, just set targets for yourself and uh, do little bit of planning homework and work towards you know uh, do training and you can certainly achieve so that would be my message thank you thank you for your patient hearing and if there are any questions uh, i would be more than happy to answer at the end of the session and uh, i i thank you uh, everyone thank you yeah, th- thanks dr mahendra there are three questions for you but i will ask only one right now okay. what do you what do you eat when you are out, out cycling uh when i when see uh, about diet you need protein when you are doing training and post training you need protein but when you are doing something like say if you are ride if i am riding kashmir to kanyakumari you should consume you know uh, most of the uh, sustained energy uh, i i do eat solid food as well as on liquid diet and uh, sustained energy is something which has a composition you get different powders uh, you know uh, which has more of an carbohydrate so sustained energies are the formulations where you have 6 to 7 portions of carbohydrate and one portion of protein right ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ನಿಮ್ದ್ರಲ್ಲೇನೆ ಏನೇ ಚೀಚ ಮಿಸ್ ಮಹೇಂದ್ರ ಆರ್ ಯು ದೇವ್ ಯಾ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಹಾಜನ್ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ಸೋ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಇಟ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಓವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಟೀನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ರೈಟ್ so i think we we'll wait for his video to come back uh, but it is also a good point where we want to see us and actually our second speaker mm-hmm. that is vira hello 
So Mira, over to you and uh, please introduce yourself. I'll let you tell in detail about you and we are going to catch Dr. Mahajan at the end of the talk again. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, ICF. Thank you, Cycle of Family. I have to call Cycle of as my family because I am closely associated with them. And uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have 20 plus speakers who are good cyclists or who have made for themselves and made name for themselves in the field of cycling. So feeling very, very fortunate to have all of you here and thanks for taking time for this talk. So my journey obviously is a journey of 10 years. So in these 10 years, not every year or every month is same. It's a journey of a lot of ups, highs and lows. And it is, I have clearly kind of uh, divided it into three sections. So it all started in 2011 when I was uh, relocated from US and my husband found a job here in Bangalore. And I basically had nothing to do. I'm a PhD in life sciences and I had some specializations in cancer biology. So I could get nothing close to my house and I just picked up cycle and si started cycling. That is how it all started. But what happens once you are trained as a PhD, once you have gone through all that training, you always try to do that or your lifestyle becomes a very methodical or you try to apply that in every section or every aspect of your life. So my cycling journey is about not repeating any event where I was successful or borderline successful, then trying to do different events in various years. And I loved, I take all my events as a project, more so as a scientific project that I really couldn't execute in my actual uh, life. Mm -hmm. So 2011 to 2015 was more so getting used to um, India, exploring Karnataka, southern regions. As Dr. Mahajan also said, it is also, I also explored events like BRMs, long distance events. I was racing on a racing platform, mm -hmm. BPCH. And I could explore everything that was available to me. I could go to seven, eight uh, different randonering clubs, Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad. So everything that was easily available, that was kind of doable, doing your SR, getting used to the racing, doing downhill racing, all that was done up to 2015. And uh, obviously I was like any other cyclist who wants to perform. I was looking at further challenges. At that point, my kids were small. So their requirement is having, uh, you know, some uh, caretaker at the house and uh, their safety. And my husband obviously was supporting me in all this. Uh, he had a fair idea about my job. So uh, everything was going on well at certain level. I mean, in my journey, there are two or three aspects that I would like to highlight that uh, being in stable Indian marriage uh, kind of makes you to come back every evening after eight days, 10 days, because that is what you have chosen. You can't be endlessly cycling, even if you would love to, because you have also opted something like having, you know, being wife, having kids, their schools, their activities. So things used to be easy until 2015. And that is where I started looking at bigger challenge. Like Dr. Mahajan said, he also used to be my one of the mentors for my k 2 I'll be coming to that. So uh, in 2015, I looked at something called as triathlons. And that kind of fascinated me because there was a lot to execute. As I love to execute, I thought, oh, this will be wonderful to just uh, swim in open water, then come out of the water and do cycling, then leave your cycle, then run. So three disciplines, more to execute more to do and I can't and I never knew how to swim until that point and I contacted someone called as Deepak Raj who is founder of Yoska who got Ironmans into the country and I just messaged him saying that I'm mom I am XYZ I have done uh, 600 kilometers I want to do triathlon so after hearing hearing to my everything for 20 minutes only thing he said that said is if you train you can do it it was that simple for him. And that one sentence of Deepak Raj changed my whole approach. His calmness, his approach towards the sport, his system, his confidence in me changed everything. And I underwent this training of uh, swimming. I used to, uh, to get into four feet water, it took me four days. And after that, within four months, uh, I could jump in a lake in Malaysia. I could execute it. 
my obviously my timings weren't great but i could finish the malaysia 2015 iron man half iron man and after that i started looking into everything what is nutrition what is hr based training what are cycles what are gearing systems what what are different heart rate zones so i again started looking at it very scientifically and i just left uh, doing uh, idli vada rides or just going 100 200 because obviously as i told you i wanted to do unique events i have uh, generally not have repeated my events and uh, uh, there is one term in our marathi called as angatirna angatirna is you pursue something uh, which is you know which is like anything you pursue that so uh, in my research if i find something that something has not been done in india by anything then maja angatirna so i kind of go mad you know because uh, <laughs> i like uh, chasing that f word so 2015 is when i was done with all these regular rides and i clearly understood that going for another triathlon or going for another international event obviously more amount of money more amount of systematic training and in that time i felt that somehow somewhere i am not uh, giving good time to my family so alarm also came that time when i was pursuing my own um, timing swimming uh, my titles my social media was growing i was having followers i would like to mention here that uh, 10 shops in bangalore so when i did my half iron man i had cycling parts from nine people and i have few people behind me like venkateshwara shivrama let it be bots let it be pro cycle i just go to them and when i see me they ask me mira what you want Uh, venki i want jersey take it venki i want cycle take it so looking at my passion looking at what i was trying to do looking at my condition that okay this lady is here in india she works with cycle on a small cycling contracts but she has method and she wants to do something big i have about 10 to 15 such people who unconditionally help me in this journey so this is my 10 years of journey but i have about 200 people who never asked me any question and just helped me okay you want to do it i cannot go on the road and do it but please take this and do it and just give me the news that you have done it so this kind of support i have gotten from people and this journey is mainly people's journey so 2015 i saw one cycle which is now i'm coming to the second phase of my thing so 2011 to 2015 was done doing events 2015 international event getting into systematic training understanding nutrition trying to better but at the same time kids were growing up and many parents they face difficulties because their kids can't do anything and uh, luckily fortunately i started facing difficulties because my kids were winning every race every race at school level every race at uh, district level so i started feeling okay these kind of shoes maybe i can give it to my daughters they can do better uh my this uh, one saturday sunday has gone i i would have taken my daughters and i started becoming busy because they were excelling whatever was coming uh, their way uh, in terms of swimming or running and we three made a very good team initially there is a phase when you uh, kind of uh, hold your kids hands but the phase came when my both the daughters were pacing me for 5 to 6 minute run and i was lagging behind and i was feeling motivated looking at them so this was the transition that happened from being a cyclist to a mother i started feeling that no uh, i mean doing full iron man uh, achieving one more dream getting 700 likes on my fb page is not something i want to do now now i want to be a good mother and i want to support my kids so i started my cycling at 36 37 because uh, i had no idea like mahajan sir said we all were busy in our normal life so why don't we change this why don't we help someone who has lot of capability and again as i said like extreme adventure people now my daughter has a sauponi uh, she is a key opinion leader for sauponi two months back they got both got open state medal after their journey of four years of continuous training so uh, these are some of the things which uh, make you rethink on your uh, goals so 2015 is the thing when i saw tandem cycle and by the time i had uh, done two srs and i had faced lot of difficulties on indian road i uh, thought that uh, it's not uh, it's not okay it's not safe for indian ladies to 
be alone on highway until something happens i i know lot of people i know we have huge community they cycle it's good for the community but i have had one or two very close calls where it would have been something very very different and difficult to deal with so i thought no i couldn't go to uh, many of the events i couldn't go to uh, rides which have high elevation because uh, not the riding uh, in capability but the cutoffs there or elevations there don't allow me to take lot of rest at night or things like that so i saw this tandem cycle tandem cycle is generally used for disabled rider or uh, special rider you can say so i was disabled in such a way that i was not able to ride at night and that thing caught my attention and another thing is i saw that this is not done by anyone in the country so again angat you know the phenomena of uh, pursuing something where i know that this first can be clearly mine so i i had a very good friend sheetal we both did 2015 we did a 200 brm by two women and uh, head of odax that time divya tate she has also posted about it and uh, it was a huge achievement it was a huge sense of relief to go out with another lady on indian highway do that 200 and it was something 200 is done by many people so we were just trying to do something unique and after that i thought okay let me take this sr that that was my third sr in 2018 2019 where uh, 2016 2017 where i teamed up with another rider rafi and he could do this first tandem sr in the country so super randonneur in the game is 200 300 400 600 so we were trying to kind of do this first tandem sr and we were absolutely only driven by this first because this was rafi's fourth sr and mine this was third is also to tell you a little bit more about it uh, we are from different religion me and rafi we share age gap of 11 years but we had done very very difficult events like enduro 3 first flight in india together so we gel really well we understand each other very well and that was the only factor we could get this done we uh, also stay at uh, in bangalore at uh, 20 kilometers apart so we don't get time to meet but we just went to start line we just got this done and it was very very nice so this is kind of the second phase i also did some rides on this tandem in other countries malaysia and thailand and santosh pawar he was my partner during these rides and uh, today is santosh's birthday and uh, Uh, i get this opportunity to wish him online and uh, this story has come in this book actually it's a page 193 of the book where you go on a very stingy budget in a timed event and you are stuck in some village in thailand your wheels your spokes are broken but as i told you i had lot of strategy during my event i initially faced problem in thailand with uh, shital previously and it was a huge uh, kind of toll on me in terms of money and time and uh, my husband asking me why are you going to thailand if you cannot even cycle 300 kilometers so this time i clearly made a strategy i wanted a partner who understand cycle who can mend cycles so i clearly looked for someone who can mend cycles and the time came when i required that so there was no kind of uh, there wouldn't have been finish like this if without santosh this wouldn't have been possible because he understands cycles he can mend cycles so this was again 2019 uh, and last one year like in cyclops my 2020 i could leverage my 2020 very well so when the whole world is suffering i don't want to call it a opportunity it was a situation it was a once in a lifetime situation where i don't have to fill any uh, tiffin boxes i don't have to take my girls every day to school uh, otherwise i am doing 5566 roles like i am their mentor i have to be with them when they lose i have to keep them motivated i am their masseur i am their nutritionist i am the one who is transporting them and of course our sponsor is my husband <laughs> who sponsors all these activities so all these 5566 roles it drains me a lot but what i do is i hear from my uh, people in my apartment complex mira why you have uh, pressure cooker whistles at your house at 3 o'clock what happens <laughs> what happens is we make food and we set out at 4 5 o'clock 
and i come out 8:30 9 o'clock and i am so drained that i need 4 5 hours of sleep and my whole cycles are changed in after that i have few students in my complex whom i train again girls come back from school and again i have to train them at 4:35 talk to them i am uh, in this my husband is very supportive i am not involved in any major housework i don't do any major housework in my house and <laughs> so general general term we hear is ghar ka akhada bana diya hai so yes ghar ka akhada bana diya hai <laughs> so all this happens and i'm i'm very happy so wherever little time i get it's either my events or their events my recovery or their recovery my nutrition or their nutrition and life revolves around that so this is what currently is happening i have small group of people i have pushed about 30 people in my complex so far so we set out regularly on treks we explore treks around the white field again this is because i need some cross training for my kids i don't want them to be uh, bogged down by one second two seconds national medal is going even though that's happening but i have to level it up i cannot pressurize them because due to my dreams i cannot pressurize them they need to enjoy the process so it's lot of psychological things lot of other aspects social aspects you are kids are training but someone might come with a message that mira can you send them to a birthday party in the evening so yeah i have to send them i don't want to send them they want to attend birthday party i want them to be normal kids i want them to win also at national so all this is very complex but being mother doing all this and uh, still doing my events i enjoy all this chaos that is happening currently and uh, lastly uh currently what is happening is after doing this k to k i could explore with robert last year due to this 2020 again so i could see that they can be on their own for 15 20 days and again i saw that k to k on tandem is not done by anyone okay boom that's it it's not done by anyone then we go ahead so my husband asked me mira what is the plan what is plan b if you get corona i said there is no plan b because i really don't know where, where and how i get corona there is only plan a that keep cycling i have found robert and me kind of registered for 1000 km geo call brave that was from bangalore randonair on 9th of april 2020 that brave couldn't happen due to pandemic conditions so i thought uh, i said to robert let's have our own event because in one or two years we don't know if, who is going to organize what kind of events so we have cycle we know how to cycle we have confidence and this k2k i think again community because out of my 18 days i was hosted 15 days i was hosted by different randonneuring clubs people paid for us people paid for our food on different dhabas people used to come and hand over 50 rupee note to us madam aap chai zarur pina mere paise se madam mere yahan aake aap sona please mere yahan aake aap please ek raat ruk jaiye so we saw after MP, no one took any money of chai, anything. When they saw that we don't have any support, group, we are just trying to go somewhere. It's, it was just this forest gum type of phenomena. People just wanted us to reach. At some point, I used to fear that if I get something in Jammu or before Srinagar, if I contract Corona, if we have accident and we can't reach, how many people are we disappointing? In Hyderabad, Hyderabad cyclist, I got a cash of 6,600 rupees in my hand. And those people said, you have to accept this money and you have to use this money. So that was huge responsibility. And I told them I will be using it. But by any chance, if I can't reach my last destination, please allow me to refund your money. Because I can't be just going to CCDs without finishing the aim. So in nutshell, this is all about it. And I would like now Charan to go ahead and this is my short story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meera. Okay. Charan, you will have to unmute yourself. Yeah, while Charan unmutes and uh, figures that out, I would like to say that it was enjoyable for me also who has known Meera for a long time to listen to her and uh, especially the line ki ghar ka akhada bana diya hai. <laughs> that was interesting uh, I know Meera has a lot of stories to tell more stories to tell and she told everything about her cycling experiences fast 
Uh, so if there are any questions for Meera, put them in chat. I think Dr. Kumar is taking note of all the questions to Dr. Mahajan, to Meera, and we'll come back to them at the end. And at the same time, I would quickly like to also tell that we are in great company today. I can see that in the audience also, we have some really good cyclists. We have uh, Dhruv Bogra and uh, Samim Rizvi, who's like a celebrity in the cycling world. So good to be speaking to all of you as well. And after Dr. Mahajan and Meera, now let's listen to Charan, who is actually quite close to the audience we have today, audience of copy editors, writers, because he himself is a journalist. So over to you, Charan. Okay, thanks and uh, good evening, everyone. So I will start my story with a beautiful news piece, which is I am dedicating to Cyclope and Neera Jain, ma'am. See, today morning I got a, a phone call, I think for a webinar, separate webinar for a college student. And he I, identified him himself as a lecturer. I asked him, uh, what made you to ask me to give a webinar to your students about cycling culture? He said, straight. Sir, November, I purchased cyc cyclo book that's called The Takeaway. And then he followed me on uh, Facebook. And my Facebook does not have anything other than cycle posts or articles, anything. So he said, uh, I've been following you. And also I have read that book, all the chapters, all the stories. And I was hooked. Believe me, this is what I quote him. Open quote. Sir, I was bowled over this particular set of chapters. And... Soon after finishing, I bought a cycle that is in November and till today, he and his friend, another journalist, are on the saddle. And every morning, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, even before you know, all this patrolling comes, he makes sure that at least 10 to 20 kilometers he covers and then is so happy that he got hold of that book. So, kudos to Cyclope and Neha Jetpam. Every... Chapter is there an inspiration and it is leading to perspiration. So, coming back to my journey, my journey is a collection of uh, inspiration stories from people who I spoke to uh, as a journalist. So, it all started uh, uh, at the age of uh, 35 and when I started uh, working in a national daily uh, and as Mahajan sir said, I was also not into any sporting event till today. I mean, till that college days, I never participated in anything. I was all into culture, like art and writing, that kind of thing. But somehow I felt, okay, sedentary lifestyle is there. Let me drop my kid. Now she is 18. But when she was LKG, I thought, okay, I should drop her to school. That is some two kilometers away. Morning, I will get some four kilometers of uh, uh, riding uh, this thing, exercise. And uh, exactly, I started some five months, I think, I was dropping her, picking her back, all that is happening, and suddenly something happened that is there uh, in the book. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the takeoff. In this particular book, I have explained why uh, that cycle thing to school did not happen. Something like which I always wanted, and then I decided, okay, let me try uh, going to office. My office is in uh, 10 kilometers away from my home. And every single day, I used to go to office and uh, in the evening and come back around midnight. And it was fun, actually, because I did not feel like, you know, waiting for any uh, bus, cab or auto, anything. You just have to hop on, reach the destination and come back. I felt like for first three, four months, I felt, okay, it was tasking. But later, body got used to. And believe me. It's been almost 13 years of uh, cycling to office and not one day I've taken any cab or something. But the fun part is, it is just that I enjoyed every ride. I look forward to going to office just to enjoy the ride. And also, evening coming back, there was no traffic. Imagine in Bangalore, you riding without traffic around. It's a blessing. So I thoroughly, it worked for me. And uh, even my parents, my wife, family, everybody was opposing that why you are to ride in this uh, particular traffic or, you know, it's so risky. But believe me, nothing uh, happened. Only one of you untoward incidents happened, but we should not get discouraged by that. But anyway, 13 years of uh, office thing happened definitely. 
but in the same moment i want to say uh, uh, right now i am not able to go to office because uh, uh, my office is my home now because of work from home except that it's been i've been waiting to see this uh, covid dust settles and then i go back to that okay coming back to my uh, journey as a my journey is all about speaking to cyclists get inspiration from them and then pursue that what you really you know think otherwise you cannot but still you said you think you will have to try at least one beautiful uh, set of stories uh, from a from a spectrum of uh, riders who i spoken to uh, i'll start narrating it here uh, the first story happened when times of india uh, turned 25 my editor said turn uh, anyway you're riding no uh, go write a story about how uh, cycling is picking up in bangalore the first headline i still remember spirit on the saddle i'm telling you that spirit is only increased in the last uh, say 10 years i've been writing about cycling stories in the last uh, it's been a one decade 10 years of writing and 13 years of riding in this particular 10 years i have come across many many types of cyclists who are achievers in their own and when i started writing believe me i had a option to write about movies and then movie reviews also and when i started speaking to these people i thought more than movies i should write about uh, cyclists because i saw heroes and heroines in them i really i am not exaggerating but the kind of confidence they were oozing and the kind of uh, um, passion they were uh, you know and i am talking about 10 years back when almost it was like you know uh, not lifestyle uh, cycling was really caught up and there was no social media also it was all you know small small achievements and then uh, like people like me and you who are uh, having a work who are having a uh, family it's like striking a balance between these two and sp- still in, in spite of that pursuing their passion of cycling and there were many many people i came to know and uh, we exchanged phone calls and then i realized there is a beauty in this particular field and then i picked it up okay let me not concentrate on movies uh, which i was doing then and then i shifted my focus completely to cycles and <laughs> it was a beautiful decision i took i think and ever uh, it's been more than uh, i don't know i lost the count of uh, number of uh, stories i have written ever since that uh, spirit on the saddle but that spirit is still there on and one or two examples i will tell you what excites me by Uh, when it comes to cycling some 3 uh, 4 years ago one person uh, in a cycling group uh, um, was to marry so he chose the venue uh, at uh, kurnool and we are sitting i am talking from bangalore in kurnool some 300 kilometers away uh, one wedding is happening he is part of the cycle group and this cycle group decides okay uh, we will attend that wedding so how, how can you think of uh, a cycling group going and the this thing suddenly uh, one of the group members said are you sure we'll go in cycle and i got wind of it that this group is uh, you know grouping and then they're going to wish the uh, bride and the groom and i mean newly wed in a cycle the moment they decide and i got wind my headline really stuck i i i wrote the headline first then the story should happen like can they carry wedding wishes on wheels that was the headline and then a story happened and believe me uh, so many stories are like that and uh, there was one instance wherein uh, one particular uh, two boys from bangalore they decide to ride in the uh, frozen highway i mean danskar uh, river is there in the himalayas and these two guys are so adventurous uh, they want to ride in that in the winter when the temperatures were so you know Uh, sub zero and then the highway was i mean the river was like a highway so the frozen highway project these two boys went and i went to uh, i was invited for the screening of their short film called the frozen highway <laughs> after seeing the frozen way highway i myself was frozen actually i got captivated yes something has to be done like this 
so uh, it's like you know uh, seeing people and then i spoke to those guys boys come we'll have a chat and those two guys really uh, spoke so uh, well and uh, i wrote a detailed article about uh, the risk involved all that but end of the day the bug the adventure bug had gotten into my heart and head and i thought one day i will do this so it is like this speak to these people <laughs> for a sports person i mean for a person who has never been into sports besides that he can also do so it was in somewhere 2016 or so then i thought anyway i have done some multiple uh, uh, tours in karnataka like uh, climbing the steepest hills like mullayangiri or kundadri or in that uh, uh, tamil nadu that uh, kalati all that i have done but himalaya was never been there on my mind then in 2017 i decided uh, let me do something different and these guys i uh, put the adventure bug in me and then i decided i'll do the kardungla and <laughs> kardungla was something you know very difficult when it comes to training and all but i thought okay let me give a shot again uh, my only go to place for anything cycle related is one place cyclop i went there uh, i was watching all the discussions and uh, there was an invite that somebody is uh, taking us to uh, kardungla in that i thought okay let me try and then there was group of uh, six people and we all assembled at delhi and then moved to manali from manali to 10 days to kardungla this is the highest so basically what i'm trying to say is a person who simply started taking his kid to school and today he is reaching this kardungla means we have everything what we want the best of the equipment the uh, network like the cyclo what it enables us to all that we need is only one thing that is the passion definitely and then the pillar in it like yes i'll go and do it it can be anybody because anyway as i told you we also have family and this all this work and all and in the coming back to uh, the touring part lot of uh, action happened uh, when it comes to 2013 14 like that lot of cycling groups started organizing multi day tours in karnataka and i was like what is this people doing 1000 kilometers in 9 days and then i started writing about it again after writing i thought okay why should not i be writing it then uh, i planned an agenda like every year i'll do one tour of multi day whatever it is 10 days 1000 kilometers like that so all these uh, years it has been my uh, ritual to pursue all these uh, tours one out of the other and then uh, this particular kardungla was like celebrating uh, 10 years of uh, cycling and uh, that is where i marked it and then 2019 happened and then uh, 2019 sorry 2018 i think yeah then i it has uh, 12 years of cycling to office can you imagine it's like every single day going to office coming back it's been 12 years i thought let me do something different then i decided to ride to pondicherry which is some 360 kilometers and then i went all the way to pondicherry i had no reason i just want to ride long and i just want to meet uh, make it memorable 12th year so i dropped a mail to lieutenant governor's uh, uh, this uh, rajnivas and then i usually make uh, every ride memorable with a title so that day i decided okay let me name it as uh, raj bhavan that is our governor's place in bangalore to so rajnivas that is lieutenant governor then i went there and they were all <laughs> really happy that a cyclist has come for no reason to meet the madam madam is again kiran bedi i went inside and uh, uh, they offered coffee and then uh, she asked me hey, why are you here like i said Uh, this is my 12 years of cycling to office and then i thought i should uh, make it memorable and then and, and then i thought okay let me make it memorable madam said okay uh, ponti is very cyclist friendly to so go i said uh, uh, this year every friend of mine is in pbp riding in the actual paris so i thought they should come to uh, indian our own paris so i'm here so that way madam said okay just come and enjoy your spin so this is it and uh, one more uh, important point is uh, 
uh, all I can say is cycling is a beautiful thing. It all takes for one to make up mind to sit on the saddle and then you will never get down. That much happy hormones it will release. I'm saying it with my experience. So just try once. For that, definitely this book, uh, The Takeoff is a very beautiful book that will really push one to see what these people are uh, doing. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, Cyclops and Neerajan made me uh, write a chapter in this, and which, is, uh, 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 which is a very small contribution from me. But definitely, after seeing these chapters, I was so thrilled and I decided to give this to, as a gift to almost all the kids because I still feel it is for the next generation to take over and we have all the equipment. We as the parents, uh, we definitely know that how it fetches us back, you know, in these times, how fitness matters. So all that, this book is definitely a gifting book and it has come at the right time, I think. and request you people to go through it i mean whoever has not gone through and also gift it to others who definitely matter and coming back to my first thing as i said this movie thing was my earlier call and then i decided this and after seeing heroes and heroines this particular uh, uh, community i thought god willing one day if i ever write i'm also a fiction writer if i ever write a story it will be inspired by these community members one day i seriously think we should make a movie and let the world know that how beautiful our parallel world is and i look forward to that day when the world or our community is seriously taken with that i lend my talk here thank you charan it was a very inspiring and interesting journey that you recounted that you related to us and we have some some of our past speakers and some of our future speakers with us we would like to hear from them uh, dhruv bogra if you are still there any comments from you yeah hi hi vivek uh, happy to be back uh, to your amazing forum on i think it's india's best forum on cycling talks i think now really picked up amazingly Well, sorry, I've been a bit out of action because of uh, COVID, and then you know managing the crisis in the in the office and at home. So it's been pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, this is a fascinating uh, book, and, and the stories are amazing. Each of these um, gentlemen and gentlewomen are absolutely incredible inspirations for a whole uh, bunch of hundreds of cyclists. Uh, and I'm part of many forums and you know, a platform like Cyclops and Cycloholics, and they have a lot of past following. So they are icons there. So I feel very privileged to hear their stories personally today uh, and feel inspired by what got them going. And uh, in today, so thanks to you and Malvika for having brought this session together and uh, you know allowing us to hear their stories personally. Because reading a book is one thing, but to hear it. Uh, and then is another thank thanks to rof and uh, charan was talking about a movie i would say uh, we can even have something like some some audio episodes which can be released on spotify it would be very refreshing to listen to the story so that is something that maybe malvika and neerajan can look into the possibility And yeah, and, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And the, and the speakers and the authors also. Mm, I've been thinking somebody, of starting a cycling podcast myself, so I think maybe we can all get together and do something. <laughs> yeah, sure, that would be great. Yeah. We have Samim Rizvi also, Mr. Rizvi. If you can unmute yourself and share your thoughts on the session. I think while uh, yeah maybe we can hear from someone else till he figures it out. Sudhanshu Verma, 
can you have your can we have your thoughts on the session and no? yeah hi hi vivek uh, hi all the side group members hi malvika so happy to see you here finally and i was very excited when i you know uh, learned that the side group members are doing this because uh, they have been uh, such a uh, such an inspiration to me because i can imagine when i did my first ride it was only because of the community you know the cycle i got the gear i got my bags came from you know some random people and i used to post on cyclope to you know be hosted by people in different cities when i first did my tour so i'm very happy that i was able to you know learn so many new things from the session although i am i am totally in a non competitive side of cycling but when i uh, you know got to know about the the kind of craziness these guys have done so uh, i think through that i have started you know accepting the competitive side more and i have been you know thinking how i can break through these barriers uh, like you know um, the other speakers were saying you know how they started doing training more scientifically so uh, like you know she said you know doing less of idli dosa ride and doing more of serious riding so i am very happy that i was part of uh, you know this but i i just wanted to know more on that part you know how how you got to that point where you were so disciplined and you were like you know right into it that you have to wake up at 3 am have to take care of the kids have to do your rides that's something which i always you know just um get stopped by so if you can, if the speakers can just talk about that side of cycling and the discipline that would be really great amira uh, you will have to unmute yourself any question definitely for mira dr mahajan because i am a rajma chawal rider <laughs> for sure <laughs> I enjoy a lot, but I have a lot of breaks, and they are the competitive. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the dancer's question, uh, I have uh, one question uh, after his question is answered, which is: if all the speakers can give one word, which defines the difference between uh, regular performance and peak performance, because I I, I coach a lot on. Uh, peak performance, and uh, I also give a lot of motivational talks, and I want to build this aspect uh, using these examples um, as characteristics. So, I like for example, I talk about grit. So, really would love to hear that one defining temperament or attitude from each of these remarkable speakers today. That will really be good. So, I will quickly answer this. First of all, uh, I I did all the events where I was doing it either post in the country. or i was putting pressure on myself by registering like many people say that they want to do half ironman full ironman so go ahead register yourself when you know that your 40000 rupees are at stake or your social media thing has gone that mira is attempting first xyz then you will definitely get up and do that <laughs> that is creating pressure on yourself second thing is i was fortunate enough to have uh, you know lot of sponsors so it's always good to have someone behind you some brand so it's another thing that sometimes you cannot find yourself for all these things so like uh, as i said during my half iron man my cycle was uh, sponsored by merida my flight ticket was sponsored by merida if so many people are watching me so i cannot afford to sit uh, sleep beyond 4 or 5 when i know that such big announcement has gone ahead so that's one thing of having people behind you having this social community pressure and another thing is as a person suppose you know you need to achieve something in minimum time sometimes i had a fair idea that i will be getting this 5 to 6 months only for doing this out of that i might have other responsibilities i might have other people who will depend on myself someone else's chance in the family will come so first of all it's about uh, see i did my phd when i was 26 so i am like that sometimes people tell me mira chill please don't panic it's done it's going to happen so by wiring i am like that when it is something small or i want to do i want to achieve perfection in that i strive for it and secondly it's always better it helps you so i was never uh, i mean many people ask me mira where is your photograph of before and after before also i was 68 kg and after 10 years also i am 65 kg 
<laughs> so at my age and my weight it requires a lot of discipline i need to train day in day out to achieve what i want to achieve thank you i would like to take on dhruv's question uh, about the difference and it's also related to sudhanshu's question the discipline and the reason why this is interesting to me is because i have been in both modes super disciplined and chasing the goal and also super relaxed and don't care about you know being the fittest or fast or anything i think the difference uh, you asked for one word dhruv is hunger so the time that i've trained okay. i did uh, mtb himalaya which is a very grueling race eight days you ride basically morning okay. to night and except uh, one rest day and i trained for that for 2 3 months and every time i would cycle 60 kilometers after work uh, and this was in mumbai uh, i used to cycle 9 pm to midnight every day and um, whether it was raining or not i remember so that time there was some kind of hunger that i have to finish this big race why do i have to finish it i'll be super honest at that point i there was the word i would use is chaska there was a chaska for being a superstar <laughs> when you achieve it and you're completed and you're looking awesome you're looking good you've cycled so hard you feel like a rock star and that is the hunger at that minute you love it so i've been in that mode and then i okay. been that you don't you're not in a rock star mode all the time then i relax and chill and i don't even want to maybe be on camera and living a normal life enjoying myself and then after some time again that thing comes back because you want to polish up that rock star feeling again so the difference uh, one thing interesting to me is i've been in the cycling scene for a long time but listening to meera dr mahajan you know i'm getting reinspired so i would say that you lose your muscle you lose your fitness then you get back to it again so more than a physical muscle i would say it is a mental muscle and uh, you can totally be on the couch and then go into rockstar mode and then again get back on the couch so that's the difference how hungry are you for yeah. that that minute correct thanks for sharing that <laughs> i need i thought it needed a touch of reality also <laughs> i would second uh, malvika in that uh what happens is like uh, in this ultra cycling they are really painful events i mean uh, there is no pleasure when you are riding you know 3000 4000 5000 whatever amount of kilometers because you are self dip you are uh, sleep deprived you are fatigued but uh, it is said that what determines there was a question also in the chat box what determines uh, i mean what uh, make you do that is like uh, uh, or what decides the outcome is how badly you want to do it like you know uh, that should hit you that i want to do this and uh, it should get into your mind and soul that i want to do kashmir to kanyakumari guinness world record within 10 days or if i want to finish ram in 8 i mean in 9 days so you know uh, once that god goes into your head and you desperately want to do it then all the things fall in place you know you become more disciplined you try to sleep early i mean instead of uh, you know playing with the phone for uh, one or two hours before you go to sleep you try, you want to go to sleep at around 10 you want to get up at 5 so all these things fall in place once you decide to do that mm-hmm. and how badly you want to achieve that goal is the is the primary uh, thing which uh, you know which decides the success of the event thank you mr marjan um, we have two more queries for you and the first one is who was your biggest competition in the race across america uh, the biggest competition uh, actually there were uh, during during race across america uh, if you actually see you will always see that team of two there are less number of participants uh, the reason for that is we had a six participants in team of two out of which three completed and three they got disqualified and uh, all 
all three of us were in a different category so whoever made it to the finish line was you know first in the category now coming to the point that why there are so less uh, participants <coughs> in team of two is that because for a solo rider yeah it is tough it is definitely tough you have to ride 400 kilometers in a day for team of two it is you both put together have to ride 600 kilometers in a day that's the minimum that you have to do so i think uh we never thought of competition when we went there it was a competition against ourselves it was a it was a battle against our own uh, capabilities that was in the mind uh, we never i mean it is such a big field of 5000 kilometers that you are not competing for remember that i i crossed a rider first night i could see one you know uh, far away i could ride right, the follow way chased i chased him and i overtook him and then again he went way it was going on speed i mean this is not a today's i mean the the competition is not for today night and you have to sustain for uh, you know 8 uh, days or 9 <clears> days <throat> doing that activity and next day we realized that that particular the rider who, who was competing Competing was, you know, uh, he got dehydrated the next day and was that admitted to an hospital. So, uh, okay, I think your uh, voice went and. Uh, now you're back right no i was speaking all this while yeah yeah we heard you we just didn't hear the end of the sentence so i think uh, we heard all the points you had to say yeah 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 so yeah. that was great to know and i'm going to uh, switch it back to dr kumar yeah like uh, the second question is how how was it like uh, uh, doing the race with your brother Was, yeah. was it an advantage or a disadvantage? <laughs> He is an elder one. I am a younger one. So, bada bhai, dada hota hai. लेकिन ऐसा नहीं. Actually, um, to frankly, in a team of two, if you are competing, your partner should be, you know, he should be very understanding and caring towards you. I will tell you an example. See, like uh, if you are riding, you know, six hundred kilometer clocking day in day out. It is third or fourth night. Okay. You have you have you have uh, traveled around eighteen hundred kilometers, and three thousand is still remaining. Now what happens is you are riding uh, like we brothers have decided that we'll ride for four hours. Now I take up a ride, I do my four hours ride. What used to happen at the end of four hours? You are, you feel that you know you are looking that your turn will get over and you will get to sleep now. Okay, but I used to call up. I mean, uh, uh, I used to speak with my. We have a Bluetooth device through which we communicate with the follow vehicle. I used to ask them, uh, let that call up the other vehicle and ask what is Hitendra doing. Then, if Hitendra is sleeping, I used to extend for another half hour, forty-five minutes. Then again, call up. You know what? This understanding is very important. Now he is sleeping. If he gets another half an hour, one hour more sleep, he will be fresh when he gets up, and he will be give his best for the another. remaining 20 hours now i am going through the grill if i ride you know 4 ghante ki jagah pe if i ride 4 hour, 5 hours also it, it's not going to make much difference to me for, but for the person who is sleeping he will recover well so you know that way it was uh, you need to uh, care each other that is very important secondly both of us i i was able to tolerate you know cold uh, better but hitendra was able to tolerate heat better so initially i had uh, cramps on the day one i had cramps because it's very hot on the west coast towards the west side of the usa and then hitendra rode for you know 3 4 hours continuously through the uh, through the day when it was very very hot 45 degrees celsius and then i recovered then i took over and late in the later part of the uh, race across america when it was raining heavily it was very very chilly and uh, hitendra suffered hypothermia then that time i took a i took a lead and rode for more number of hours so you know 
that way you have to com- complement each other and uh, riding with brother was real in advantage here because we cared for each other that's the main thing i mean thanks dr mahajan then neera you wanted a couple of minutes so you can unmute yourself and neera jain so i can't let uh, this opportunity pass to thank a couple of people who really helped in this entire project of making this book and uh, dr vivek kumar you were very extremely helpful in the sense that after i had copy edited the whole book and i showed it to you you said you know you could do with another pair of eyes looking through the text hmm so as you know editors don't like to hear that after they have painstakingly gone through the entire text five or 10 times you don't want to hear that but i took her advice and got vidya ravi in and she did pick out a couple of uh, proofreading uh, errors not couple of more and i am grateful to her for that i'm also uh, grateful to you uh, vivek for uh, thinking of this series in which you bring editors and uh, travel together break free is a concept that is not really associated with editing but you have brought it together and i think that's a great start because it's not essential that we editors have to be so geeky we can also become uh, a little more sporty and uh, the other thing is that uh, karthik played a wonderful role he managed correspondence with uh, 37 authors this is the first time i worked on a book in which there were 37 authors involved and getting copyright permission etc was a lot of work which karthik did with lot of uh, happiness wonderful and uh, lastly about malvika i would say that malvika was almost the co-editor of this book she doesn't want me to say this but she did do a lot of editing in the book and more than that she designed the cover of the book which i feel is great it's got navin john in a very lean and mean looking uh, position and uh, that that really makes the book look good and malvika has also designed the story openings of the book which i think is very uniquely done i've never seen seen it been uh, done like this and uh, so yeah thank you to all these people and thank you to the entire cyclop team as well thank you uh, thanks neera for your inputs and uh, we have our speaker for the next session mr anup with us and he has also written a very interesting book bicycle dies and it's about 12 riders who travel across the world so if you can unmute himself and tell us a little about the next session and about the book uh hello everyone uh, uh, we we are right now uh, in goa and we are about i mean there's a storm and cyclone warming here and it's it's raining already here quite heavy uh, that is the thing uh, but uh, more about us we we, we are a uh, 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 kind of a old age couple i am 68 savya is 63 and we just took to cycling about a few years back when we moved from bombay to to goa after spending our professional life there i have been a journalist all along and savya has been a professor in many colleges there in bombay uh, when we came here uh, we took to cycling inspired by uh, some of the good cyclists uh, that is one of the question that i have with neera that why didn't you have any contribution from a goan cyclist because goa we have quite a few uh, renowned cyclists one of them is belinda vegas who's been in the limca book of records for doing the uh, super enduring three times in one single year she is in in the limca book of record and we stay in the same village here uh so cycling uh, is quite popular in goa in fact i would say uh, goa is a cyclist paradise in the country if there was such a word you know beautiful roads and 
not much of traffic and you have all kinds of things you know unlike the popular perception that goa is all beaches it's also part of western ghat so we have lot of hills good elevations and very good roads so it's made cycling very very popular in goa so that is one thing so we took to cycling about few years back and uh, around the time uh, we came to know about these cycling journeys which which took place about 100 years ago from some of the indian cyclist and we were quite amazed at that and uh, uh, then we started researching uh, on this for last 5 years we did the research and found out all about these journeys found out everyone who uh, and their grandchildren and their grand nephews and their sons and all who were scattered all over the world we tried to contact and you know we got in touch with them finally It took us 5 years to do that and after that we have written this book there were in all five journeys from 1923 to 1934 five different journeys uh, they the cyclists were all from bombay and very coincidentally they all belong to parsi community these are two common things they were all from bombay and they were all parsis and they took five separate journeys between 23 and 34 and they went round around the world <coughs> sorry the last journey got over in 1942 which means they saw actually both the world war 1 and world war 2 i mean they have amazing experiences in their journeys these are not the journeys of you know kind of journeys that we are talking about today the uh, journeys that that break some records or you know thousands of kilometers in 9 days or 10 days but these were journeys around the world and they experienced the world as no indian would ever have they were on the streets of this world during the first world war during the second world war and they have absolutely phenomenal experiences so we thought uh, we first did a, a photo exhibition on their journeys in in uh, goa in uh, 2018 uh, which was inaugurated by pt usha and then we did another photo exhibition in ncpa in bombay which was hosted by ncpa as part of its 50 years of celebration ncpa is the biggest art uh, institution in 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 uh, bombay national center for performing arts then we thought that you know it was very important to write about these journeys and that is how the idea of the book finally came this is the book uh, uh, i don't know we can i have sent vivek uh, some posters but this is the book uh, we'll talk about it next time when we meet uh, but this this is what we are, we have to say thank you thank you so i'd like yeah, to say you. that uh, your book is a fantastic idea and uh, it's amazing that you could get such a large group together all of them high achievers all of them driven by a passion for cycling and the stories are really amazing to hear so thank you for making us privy to this and all the best to cyclists thank you so much and i i am going to attend the next session and look forward to reading that book as well thank you thank you thank you yeah th- thanks yeah, and i mean when you read that book you have to think of a world without proper roads you have to think of a world without break uh, without uh, gears you have to think of a world without money and you have to think of a world of you know survival by sheer sure will power and that's what the book is about thanks both of you and uh, miss uh, one of our ex speakers mr hirak kar he wants to share something so mr kar you can unmute yourself Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, I must salute our three speakers today and the editors of the book for an excellent presentation and very well composed presentation. Also, uh, I'm not really a cyclic enthusiast. I've been a sailor. I've been a motorcycle rider and things like that. Uh, but i still cycle now every day 2 and a half kilometers in the morning 2 and a half kilometers in the evening that is all that i do uh those of you who age chronologically and uh, after some time you find that you can't raise your leg over the saddle to sit down you could use your cycling experience in another way which is what i do now when i go to any of these southeast asian countries 
small places like say in Vietnam, small place like Hoi An or a place in uh, Thailand, the thing like that. What I do is I rent a cycle and go around that place. So from your challenging feats of going from Kanyakumari to Mount Everest and the east of America to the west of America, you could also now gradually, when you want, when you visit these small places or even in India, you could rent a cycle and go around. It is a pleasure riding a cycle where you feel you're absolutely free from everything. And, uh, you know, like when you're riding a horse, you feel power between your knees and your hand when you're holding the uh, strap, but uh, or when you're holding the reins. But when you're cycling, you feel absolutely cool and relaxed. I mean, that's how I feel and out of the world. I have not done long distance cycling, but this is how I cycle, cycle in small places. Once again, thank you very much for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Yes, back to Charan now. He wanted to say something. Yeah, in this uh, beautiful journey of my being a rider and a writer, uh, I have a lot, I owe a lot to my editors who have been continuously supporting and giving a lot of space to, to the community and I really indebted to them. And of all the articles, one small piece of bit I want to end this, uh, my talk here, that is about, that happened in 2018 end or so, it's about, I wrote about a article called uh, about tandem cycling. So how tandem is picking up in Bangalore. Basically, I spoke to people who are into this and then uh, how tandem is risky or what are the nitty gritties or the nuances one has to follow, all the tips. I wrote one article and this article really, I never thought that it can lead to something beautiful. Where it actually happened means, okay, there's a tandem couple in Bangalore that is Pramita and Sanat, and uh, their chapter is also there here in this book called The Tandem Blog. I do not want to talk about it because it has to be read to be enjoyed more than that. And coming back to the tandem couple, uh, I wrote uh, about that particular piece in that uh, article. I had put a box called uh, how this tandem cycle can enable blind people also can ride. See, basically tandem cycle is one seat uh, there is in the front and the other one is back. The one in the seat is actually there's the balancing that is called the captain. And in the back, the, the rider is called the stoker. Basically, in the stoker, any blind person who cannot see also can push, I mean, can add to the uh, pedaling and then they together can enjoy. You know what is this cycle is all about? Getting the breeze face, I mean, breeze hitting your face and getting the adrenaline. So this particular box I had put, and I never thought it will catch an eye of a blind person. Nowadays, technology is so high, I mean, so beautiful, even a blind person can interact with the, the text here and then get to know. So there was one uh, guy, is a banker, his name is Pranay, Pranay Gadodia, and he got wind of this story, and he wanted to do that particular writing. So he went uh, to that article, and he realized that he can also write. And then he, he was going through the people who I spoken to. That is one, there was Sanat. And then he Googled Sanat. And he it was led to the tandem couple.com. And then he got contact of Sanat. And straight away they connected. And this Pranay straight away went to that uh, uh, Sanat's house. And then uh, they enjoyed the spin. Basically, uh, near their house only, this Pranay uh, enjoyed his spin. So after a long gap, uh, for some retinal condition, he could not ride in between. But after a long gap, he could ride. And he was so happy. Then he thought, okay, why me only? Let me connect with this uh, community and uh, make other uh, uh, people who you know, know among the blind, let them all ride. And around 2018 end, I think, they all uh, uh, collected, I mean, they grouped in Kaban Park and then they decided uh, Kaban Park is close to other vehicles on a Sunday morning. So they decided, they chose that day and that venue and there were some 15 blind people and they all, uh, and whoever I spoken to for this article, they had all 
come there with their tandem cycles and then a uh, blind people really enjoyed their spin in this this thing and that i think one of the beautiful uh, uh, effect what my article led to and i was so privileged to see this uh, you know child like entu and they were so happy to relieve their childhood which i never thought one small box can lead to this and then cut to 6 months later and then in a, i was standing in the newsroom i get a message from sanat saying that okay charan pranay had come and he wanted to pursue more so we together rode some 50 kilometers today one blind person and he was so happy i spoke to him also and then it ended up with one person who had never ridden in the recent press because of sight condition ended up riding 50 kilometers and that was a revelation i thought i am really happy to be in this particular uh, uh, position to write about the community uh, and also i enjoy uh, speaking to them and also get inspired and this particular one episode i thought i should share with you all the power of media is amazing and even the so far social media also but this uh particular incident i is really opened my eyes and i'm happy that our community is so vibrant and supportive and that's it ah uh, okay charan there is a question for you do you know adil govdia and gowadia gowadia in bangalore yeah. and you no i i know only this pranay gadodia uh no, i do not know Charan, you uh, you still write for uh, uh, for the yeah yeah, yeah yeah I, I, I work which, for I work for Times of India. Okay, this Adil Gowadia, uh-huh. uh, he he is featured in in our book. In fact, he is the last Indian that we know of who okay. uh, travelled from who who cycled from India to US. Okay. In 1984, he cycled for 30,000 kilometers. He attended the US Olympics. the same okay. olympics in which pt usha lost by 100th of a second adil gowadia was there in that olympics he he was made to hold the olympic torch because he cycled from all the way from here to us and he lives in bangalore it will be very interesting he 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 is featured in our book definitely thanks a lot with him. the book ends with him because the last journey that indians took was 1934 and his was 50 years later in 1984 so we have included in the book in case you are interested in meeting him i will send you the particulars if you want definitely if not the writer i mean as a writer writer i will definitely pursue this and uh, thanks for this heads up and i will definitely take this forward thanks a lot sir thank you it has been an incredible session and talking to so many riders so many speakers ex speakers current speakers future speakers so before we end if there is any query from the audience anyone if they want to ask a question they can unmute themselves and or even if they don't have a question if they just a comment or a feedback any thought i do read see a lot of comments in the chat box which i will share with Malvika, um, one thing that came to my mind since you're the biggest cycling group is: Have you been campaigning for cyclists' right on the rights on the road, like you know, proper cycling tracks, especially in cities where you know? I mean, Anup and I we travel more in the hinterland because we don't like to face traffic. So, do you fight for cyclists' rights or you know, campaign? Cyclist ride so that the community can have, uh, you know, better safety, better rides, and better privileges on the road. You know, which will encourage younger cyclists also to come forward. You know, say for example, people cycling to work or people cycling to college or school. It can be a very viable thing if you have a proper track for cyclists. The question is for Malvika. Yeah. Hello. so that's a you know that's an opportunity not even an opportunity i think opportunity is the wrong word that's something we have been wanting to do for a long time but it is not something we have done very actively uh there are many people in india especially with the title bicycle mayor who are doing it in a very structured fashion yeah and we have not done it we have done it but not in a very strong or structured way mm. 
we have uh, uh, rather been useful is if there is an incident or uh, uh, then our platform is there and people tell about that incident and then everyone else on that platform has taken action so that is how we have uh, uh, we have made sure that a cyclist incident of voice is not lost he's not just stranded and wondering where is he going to get help from like i'll give an example there's this uh, young guy tejas he was cycling all over india and uh, camping wherever he would stop his cycle and in himachal i think he got beaten up by some people very unfortunate he got beaten up by some people and he shared this on cyclop he gathered support on cyclop and finally there was a video of those people authorities got in touch with those people the police got you know found those people and in a very like a school kind of way shamefacedly they stood and they apologized and i don't think they would have ever expected that to happen they would have thought they roughed up a young kid and it will pass yeah. so we have and we also helped you know push that post make it known let the important people in cycling step forward so we have helped that way there are many other examples of this but yes there's a need for better infrastructure um when i got the opportunity to speak on ndtv's program this is the exact thing i highlighted uh that we need parking because everyone wants to cycle to malls or offices but where do they park their expensive cycles yes. and that's something we don't even have to wait for the government anyone uh, in you know private positions uh they can take care of this so i hope to do it in a more structured fashion in the future uh then there was a disha ride for um, uh, you know speaking against violence against women so that is something uh, also we were part of but it is my hope that we do it in a more structured fashion yeah. and so far our focus has been plainly on the enjoyment of rides thank you thank you very yeah malvika you are right first we need to get more people to gather into this <clears throat> once you have enough numbers i think other things will automatically fall into place so next next sunday we will have an oops session and then next month we will have a session by samin and in july we will have a session by sudhanshu so this cycling series will keep on going and i think we have so many stories like all of the riders that we can we will never be short of sessions as to say so i really look forward to seeing all of you next saturday at 4 pm and we have our editorial sessions also on sundays so tomorrow at 11 am we have a session on how to grow your editing team so those of you who are into writing or editing like they can come and attend that session Malvika last word from you before we end you haven't mentioned the store you mentioned the community you mentioned the book but i think the store got missed out oh yes so cyclop has had quite a journey started as a community 12 i think 12 years ago and then um, all the brands were there cyclists uh, all the cyclists in this uh, uh, talk will know that many of the cycles weren't even available in india some some years ago then suddenly all the high end brands came in and still cyclists are figuring out that which is the light which i should use that is affordable or that can you know make my riding safe they don't know how to pick a helmet that it should be the correct size or how do you know this is a safe helmet so we created a store which comes with a lot of support in buying uh, the gear you need for cycling and we are like start with any essential gear and then you know get gear or get all the tools and equipment you need as your requirements go up just like sudhanshu who is in this audience and who does really cool touring and he knows you need the right bags and the right tires that will last on long rides so if you want to check out there's a store called www.cyclop.in and you can explore what's there you can ask us Uh, directly on the group or in chat which kind of a cycle which kind of tires or light would suit me just join the community and then you will start on this ride with us and things will happen on their own that is the that is what i would like to end on 
and uh, great being here today thank you very much bye thanks malvika thanks all the speakers and thanks to all the wonderful participants who stayed with us for almost 2 hours i lost track of time but it was 2 hours well spent and we look forward to many more sessions with all of you have a nice day everyone stay home stay safe